Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? This is Amanda. So today is the 1st of June 2022. I will be doing a video just on June's energy for us, trying to pin it down a little bit um, in the next week. So stay tuned for that. In this video, we're going to have a look at the Royals because we have a Jubilee, Platinum Jubilee, uh, holiday coming up in the UK starting from tomorrow. Thursday and Friday are bank holiday and then Saturday, Sunday we have celebrations. Lots of people are having street parties on the Sunday including my road. Um, so I thought it would be a, a great moment just to tune in to all of the main players in the royal family. The Queen, uh, Prince Charles, Camilla, William, Harry, um, William, Harry, Megan, Kate, that's right. Interesting, I put the two lads together because I was going to go with um, couples. But anyway, maybe that's a sign that they're coming closer together. Anyway, we're going to have a good look at them. Um, for people that really can't stand the royal family uh, and everything that they, you know, are about, um, you don't need to watch the video, okay? So I'll see you next time. This is for people that would like to and um, positive, encouraging, Loving comments are welcomed. If you just want to rain on our parade and send negativity, return to you, okay? Right, let's get going. Um, I'm going to start with the Queen. Um, but before we do that, just a little bit of... Uh, uh, a little bit of information to build the picture of the UK at the moment. Uh, for those that are not in the country. Um, I mean, I've just been up north and Harrogate, beautiful, my second hometown, looked very, very pretty with all of the, you know, Union Jacks everywhere. A lot of homes um, had got decorations in the window. I have to say, down south in my part of the world, not so good. But I think that people are going to probably start putting stuff up from tomorrow. As I say, it's a bank holiday. Um... One thing that we do do in the UK, particularly linked into royal um, events, is we always get a new mug. <laughs> Some of us do anyway. Um, now, this mug actually dates back to the coronation. This was my late mother-in-law, Barbara's mug. So that's really old from the 1950s. There's also this rather lovely one as well from a, a quite an old pottery uh, company called Jasper, Jasper Ware, 1800. Maybe that's one to take to Antiques Roadshow, I don't know. Um, but mine will never really be worth anything. They can become collector's items, these mugs. This one won't, though. This was from Tesco. <laughs> this was two quid. Uh, but I thought, well, we'll have, we'll have that today, just to lighten the mood. The other nice thing is that um, my dad bought this for Sophie, not one of my daughters. This is the uh, Royal Mail's tribute to the Queen and her 70 year reign. And there are eight stamps there, all with different pictures of her through the decades. It's rather lovely. It's a collector's item. Uh, my dad is a stamp collector, so he sort of passed that gene on um, to Sophie. And I think it's, it's, it's all good. Um, right, let's get to it. Let's start with the Queen. Um, so... I mean, you all know who she is, unless literally you've lived underneath the rock. Uh, I think everybody knows who the Queen is. Um, she was born on the 21st of April, 1926. She is a Torian, and I think we can see that in her character over the years. Um, she's going nowhere, and uh, she's always said that she will not step down from the throne. Um, that effectively, she'll die on the she'll die basically as Queen. Um, she's not going to pass it on to Charles or William. Having said that, I am going to look at the succession because she is now 96 and her health is starting to fail. Um, the interesting thing about her is that, well, there are many interesting things, but her father um, only became king by default. And he wasn't king for very long. Um but he became king as a result of Edward the... Let me just get my get my facts right here. Edward the... Was it the eighth? Let's have a look here. Uh, abdicating. Let me just check this because otherwise everyone's going to be screaming at me that I've got my facts wrong. Uh, and I want to get it right. Queen Elizabeth. 
right yeah so yeah oh sorry king edward the eighth okay so king edward the eighth was the one who abdicated the throne he said he didn't want it and he went off with wallace simpson who was a divorcee which was a real scandal in those days lived his rest of his life in france as an exile um over the years it's come out that actually he was a nazi sympathizer as well It'd be quite interesting to channel him wouldn't it um, so anyway, the Queen's father then became the throne because Edward VIII had abdicated and he he died quite soon after that. And then she became Queen at 27. So she wasn't really expected to become Queen as young as that. Um, if Edward VIII had carried on and not abdicated, I mean, she would have become Queen at a much later date, if at all. So it's just interesting, isn't it, how these little twists of fate um, and destiny happen in people's lives. So yeah, she's 96. She's been queen for 70 years. She's the head of the, uh, she's the queen of the United Kingdom and 14 other Commonwealth realms, according to Wikipedia. Um, I thought it'd be interesting as well, just to, because what I'm, the energy I'm linking back to with her right now is during World War II, when she was a teenager, actually. I'm just looking here at um, something I found on Google. Um, so, yes, yeah, she was a teenager in the Second World War. Um, and Buckingham Palace was bombed, actually, during the war. Um, and her mother um, used to go round the East End of London and places like that, um yeah vis visit visiting well seeing the wreckage basically of um of bombing raids but anyway that's in the past uh but i just felt like i needed to bring the war energy in and there's a picture here of her let me just see if i can pull that up this is queen this is the queen in the war you see that picture mm. so she's been around forever i mean there are very Nobody in the UK really remembers a time when she hasn't been here. So let's pull a few cards for her. Let's see what wants to come through. Let's just start very general and then we'll drill down. OK, so let's pull a couple of cards for Queen Elizabeth. OK, those three have just flown out of the... Uh, deck okay so we have the energy of will wisdom and mind here is somebody who is very controlled um, in terms of will wisdom and mind particularly because it comes out with the card of balance let's put it this way you've never seen the queen having a meltdown and you never will okay she is the epitome, and look, we've got the crown up there. She is the epitome of stiff upper lip, okay? Keep it all in. Don't show your emotions. Uh, the only time I can really remember the Queen showing her emotions, just from memory, is um, the, uh, she had a boat, didn't she? I mean, a bit more than a boat. The Queen the Britannia, was it called? Anyway, the, the big ship that was named after her that she took lots of holidays on and obviously had personal associations and I remember seeing her cry and her lip wobble when that boat was decommissioned um, but you know if you think back to even the funeral I mean I'm sure this is Prince Philip the king of forces um, she she didn't show any emotion at all so um, very balanced um, also this card here the card of balance has got contracts on the table so this is indicative i'm not telling you anything you don't already know but it's just confirming that this was a soul contract that she had to come in and be the queen in this lifetime in this incarnation rule for as long as she had and um she was meant to you know it's interesting here as well because there's an empty chair and the empty chair i feel is um, the father who passed away. It could also be um, the one who abdicated as well. But then it was left to her to sort of balance the books, as it were, to keep the equilibrium. Um, the King of Forces is absolutely Prince Philip, who obviously died um, 
this year was it? Yeah, I think it was this year or end of last year. His funeral was recent anyway. Um, and that to me is Philip up in the highlands of Scotland where they go or went, Balmoral, uh, hunting, fishing. Um, you know, that's that's what the cards is, is all about to me. And equally, she couldn't have done what she's done over the last 70 years without the king of forces, okay? I just want to have a quick look at this card number 20 because I know that this is a symbol as well. And uh, let's just see if there's anything here that I've um, missed out, which is important, because I think there's something I haven't said that needs to be said. Um, so here we go, yeah. Let me pull the card up again. It says, a gold crown of power and authority rests above a Celtic trinity knot. On either side of the Celtic knot are the symbols for fire and water, and below is the ancient three-legged symbol of the coat of arms from the Isle of Man. This card brings with it a time of enormous power, balance and expression. The first three rays, or the energies of the divine, move within you equally, power and will, love and wisdom, and intellect or mind. You are working intimately, even if you're not conscious of it, with the ascended masters who are linked to these energies. Um, with the gold crown raised high, you're likely to find yourself in a significant position of authority. Uh, yeah, I think she was. And influence at this time. Okay, so yeah, that's just a perfect card for her, isn't it? Absolutely, because she has been and still is a figure of supreme authority. Um, Okay, uh, that one also flipped out at the same time. These two did. We've got the Queen of Scrolls, which would be her. So yeah, she's coming out as the Queen of Scrolls and Philip's coming out as the King of Forces. Um, again, you know, the Queen of Scrolls. Can you see all of the, co the contract? Again, it's the contract. Contracts, contract. Soul contract to come and be this person in our world. Because I tell you what, there's a lot of other people that didn't put their hand up and say, I'll sign up to that. Um, you might think that it looks very glamorous. And of course, she's had a life of great privilege and money and being protected and all the rest of it. Um, but equally, it's been a life of hard work, um, duty, responsibility, um, a very narrow path that she's had to stay on. And she's, you know, not, not everybody would have been able to have done that. We have the Divine Physician card that's come out as well for her. Um, and I feel this is the doctors, um, the helpers, the healers um, that have... I mean, the card. this card talked about Ascended Masters that work through you. She does have a faith, the Queen. She's, um, she's talked a lot about her Christian faith over the years, that it's sustained her through good times and bad. And I think this is, this is the energy of Jesus here who... Um, has, has helped her as well. Because again, from a soul contract perspective, whoever you are and whatever the soul contract is, if it's a big contract, and this one was a huge contract, one of the biggest actually in our world, certainly, um, in terms of its prominence, visibility, power, authority, etc. Put it this way, when you put your hand up to such a contract pre-incarnation, they don't send you down without help and without support. OK, I mean, why would they? Why would they? Um, nobody would sign up otherwise to that. So, you know, these are the masters that have been um, around her trying to help her as well. Um, so, OK, so those are interesting cards for her. Um, there's also a nod here to the blossom tree. Um, which comes out around the time of April um, when she was born as well. So, yeah, those are those those cards are those. For her. Okay, I'm just going to use a different deck now, um, just to get another layer of information, and I'm just going to have a look at the energy around her at this time. Okay, so let's just have a look at the energy around Queen Elizabeth II at this time. Queen Elizabeth II, the energy around her at this time. Queen Elizabeth II, the energy around her at this time. We're going to have two cards. I'm just hearing two cards. The Queen of Pentacles.
and the Ten of Wands. We've also got the Six of Cups on the bottom of the deck. So this is clear that she's finding it quite a heavy burden now. She's quite, it's quite a heavy burden to keep carrying on and she can't do it on her own anymore. Um, she increasingly, and we see this, is having to rely, for example, on Charles and William to fulfil some of the obligations for her. The, the, um, uh, I don't know if it was the opening of Parliament or when they read the laws that they want to bring into um, fruition for the next year. State opening of Parliament, I think it's called. Um, that was only a couple of weeks ago. It was the first time, I think, in her reign she wasn't able to do it and Charles and William had to step in. She's actually finding it quite a burden now to carry on and that's just because of her because of her age and because of her health um let's just have one more card let's see going forward going forward for her please queen elizabeth ii going forward i'm going to say past the platinum jubilee celebrations because so going forward past that date let's just have a look at her energy the nine of wands she's very stubborn though you know when i say that i mean she's a taurian it's like she might be finding it really hard but she's stubbornly she's stubbornly clinging on to the throne um and you know she's defending her position she's defending her position it may very well be that charles or william are actually saying yeah look card of lovers the card of choice i feel they're saying to her look um, you know, or maybe it's not said to her, but it's said around her in uh, private circles, you know, that maybe she could step down now. She's done her duty. This is the moment to step down after 70 years. Um, there's a choice there, but she's, she's, she's resisting that. She's resisting that. And that doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah, look at that. She's fighting that idea off. She's fighting that idea off. Um, and sending sending anybody that says that off with a flea in their ear is what I'm is what I'm wanting to say. That's what I'm hearing. So yeah, it's what we it's what I would expect to see. You know, she's always said she's not going to step down. So that's the energy we've got there. Okay, um, let's move on now. Let's have a look at Prince Charles. Um, let's see how he's doing. Okay, those two cards just flipped out before I did anything. We've got the Nine of Pentacles and the Page of Pentacles. I mean, Charles has been waiting in the garden his whole life for the top job. That's the truth of it. Um, I'm sure I've channeled before something linked into the fact that um, he is somebody that on in a different planetary system... Um, he didn't step up to the top job or made a mess of the top job. I can't remember what I've even said in the past, but I know I said something. And as a consequence, there's some karma to play out in this lifetime where he's meant to be kept waiting because either he, um, there was a, a dereliction of duty in, a, in another lifetime or an abandonment of duty. Um, actually, yeah, I don't know, there's something there with the one who abdicated as well. Uh, there's some sort of uh, energy which Charles and that man had in another life as well. So the, the point is, it's been a waiting game for him. He's always been the page. He's never been the king. He's always been the page. He's always been the one that's been waiting. Um, and he's lived, he's lived a very gilded life. You know, it's all about money. He's lived a very privileged, gilded life pampered life pampered prince is what i'm hearing um but it's been a it's been a waiting game and that page of pentacles makes me smile actually linking into charles because um charles has got a great love of plants and uh horticulture and uh, i'm not mocking that at all you know but in the oh i don't know 80s and 90s certainly here in the uk he was what he was what he was mocked while widely for um, he, he came out and said something about you need to be talking to your plants. And if you talk to your plants, they grow better. Um, he's, he's all into that type of stuff. Uh, and I'm saying that because that little that that feels like a little gnome or leprechaun type energy. It's like an elemental energy from spirit, uh, from nature. He's quite connected into all of that. Uh, but there he is, he's waiting. Let's see what else we can pick up. And what's he waiting for? On the bottom of the deck, we've got the Three of Swords. He's waiting for the ending. 
I mean, actually, if you just, again, look at this from a higher perspective. Yeah, look at that. You see the chariot. Wow. Wow. I did reshuffle these decks as, uh, deck as well. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting effectively for his mother to die. So he gets the job that he's always been destined to get. I mean, can you imagine that? If you actually just think about it from your own personal perspective, that you're waiting on your parent to die so that you can fulfill the destiny that you're meant to fulfill. It's a bit of a tough one, that. And you see the same card, sorry, after that. So he's waiting for the ending and then he can move on, you know, um, fast. The chariot is movement forward fast. Um, but then we had the Queen's cards coming out again, you know, but there's a choice. There's a choice and she's defending the fact that she doesn't want to step down. So this is all about um, push, pull, push, pull. It's like he wants to he wants to fulfill his destiny, get going with being king. But there's no cards of kingship here so far. Um, this is all about the waiting game. OK, let's pull some cards with regard to him becoming king. Now, uh, again, the death card just pulled out, popped out as soon as I said that. Didn't even get to shuffle the deck. OK, the death card just came out as soon as I said that. Um, I have been on record numerous times of saying that I think the future of the monarchy lies in William's hands, not Charles's hands. Now, if Charles becomes king, I don't think he's going to be king for a very long time. Um, in fact, I'm actually picking up something linked in a very similar, a similar energy of what happened with the queen when she became queen unexpectedly because her father died early. And she then had to sort of step into that role very quickly and get her act together. And I think a similar thing could happen to uh, William, whereby I think William thinks he's got a few more years or a few more decades before he's really got to take the top job. But I think the top job will come to him sooner than he thinks. And it comes on the back of death. I mean, you know, I'm not wishing anything in on anybody, but death is death. There's two deaths here. There's the death of the Queen which is the Three of Swords, which is obviously going to happen because she is 96. But then we've got this other death as well. Um, there's another way that you can interpret this, which is that Charles, when he becomes king, he's already said this, OK? This, this, he's already said this in public. He's going to transform the face of the monarchy much more than people realise. And then William will transform it even more after that. Charles sort of, sort of opens the door to the big transformation that's going to come in. And they're doing that because they're not stupid. They know that they need to change and adapt to keep the monarchy alive. And it will be a much more slimmed down monarchy in the future. I don't believe this is the death of the monarchy. I believe in my lifetime certainly it's going to keep going and in my children's lifetime. Beyond that, I don't know because it's not written yet. Um, but certainly for the foreseeable future, it carries on, but it's going to be radically transformed. Um, all of the hangers on, you know, the people that are paid, um, that a lot of people don't really agree that they should be paid. It's all going to be it's all going to be um, uh, washed away, basically. And it will literally just be the key pay players of the family that you will see. Um, and, and the rest will sort of recede into the shadows a little bit more. OK, let me just see if I can get anything else on Charles becoming king. Um, the King of Cups and the Magician. So, yeah, it does feel as though he, he does get there. It's just the question is, how long is he there? OK, now, King of Cups, Charles is a very emotional man. And actually, I don't know if you've ever seen him when he's talking about his mother. He gets quite emotional. Um, and I think he's going to be he's going to be devastated when she dies. I mean, everyone's devastated when a parent dies. But this is the King of Cups. He's, he has to hold it together. It's not the King of Pentacles. It's not stoic. It's somebody who really is um, deeply um, or just deeply emotional. But he's got the magician there. Um, he's got the magician there, which is what you'd expect to see for a king or a queen, because they're the one that have all of the tools on the table. OK, um, so, yes, it feels he gets there, but he's the King of Cups. King of Cups, the other energy is. My battery just died. Uh, interestingly, when I was talking about death. Um, 
he, the, what I was about to say is the other aspect of the King of Cups is that he can be kind. He can be, he has energy, he has, which is linked into sensitivity and kindness. Um, so that's that. Anything else to say? Charles becoming king. The hanged man. It's not going to be what he thinks it's, it is going to be. Um, Ten of Cups. Still a bit of mystery surrounding all of this in terms of... I realise I've just said I think he does become king, but then we've got the then we've got this, the hanged man. It's almost like either that is, yeah, it's what he, it's, it's not what he expects it to be. It doesn't fulfil him in the way that he thought it was going to fulfil him. It feels different to how he expects it to feel. Um, or the Ten of Cups here would be the public, the public um, who demand something different, who actually have a, when she goes, have a change of, um, there's an energy of like, we don't want Charles, we want William. That could be part of it as well. The High Priestess, we're not meant to see exactly how this plays out yet. Um, which is frustrating, but that's the truth. So, yeah, it's it's. I'm, I'm being taken back to when uh, Queen Elizabeth became queen. There was a, you know, the, there was a chain of events that happened where she unexpectedly became queen. She wasn't expecting it that quickly. And it's very. It's hidden. And we've got the High Priestess here now, which is saying there's something hidden here as well. So um, it's literally like trying to nail a jelly down at this point. But anyway, that's as far as I'm going to go with Charles. Let's give a good shuffle of the cards and let's have a little look at Camilla. Let's just shuffle the deck properly, though, before we do that. Oh, one thing I thought would be interesting to do is to have a look at the Ascended Master energies that are around them all. Um, because they will be around them, because they're around every human being, okay? God loves everybody equally. Um, so let's have a look. So with the Queen, I really think it's the energy of Christ, to be perfectly honest. Um, but we'll we'll pull another card for the Queen, and then we'll pull one for Charles as well. Okay, so let's just go back. Let's, let's use the um, Keepers of the Light deck by Carl Gray. So one for the Queen. Let's just ask any energy that's around her, particularly at this time. Queen Elizabeth, an energy that's around her at this time. Queen Elizabeth, an energy that's around her at this time. <sighs> Spirit has a sense of humour, I tell you. Diana. Oh, gosh. I mean, is that the goddess Diana or is that Princess Diana? It's probably a bit of both. Diana is around her at this time. Um, Diana's like this sort of ghost that's haunted her uh, to a degree throughout the last few decades because Diana was the queen of people's hearts in many ways and she would have been the most amazing queen. She was the queen that was never queen. And um, so Diana is the energy that is around the Queen um, and the goddess Diana as well. Um, it's the, mo the moon goddess, the moon goddess energy. Oh. I just get this feeling, and I've said it many times, that Princess Diana always had respect for the Queen. She was a monarchist and I believe she still does have respect for the Queen and she wants a safe transition and an easy transition um, for William when he eventually succeeds the throne. So it's as though Princess Diana's energy is around the throne of England and it's as though she's overshadowing it and... Um, she will also help Charles if he becomes king for however long he will be king. 
it's as though she's watching over, she's watching over the transformation of the monarchy. She's saying, because I channel her, she's saying um, that what she started, she wants to see finished. And what she means by that is putting the heart back into the monarchy, putting the heart back into that institution, um, showing the, um, she always had the common touch, Diana. You know, she always wanted to be with the man on the street. She wanted to be with the homeless. She wanted to be with the people who were ill. She's passed those um, uh, examples onto her children. And she wishes to see a monarchy that is more in touch with its people. And it feels as though Charles, f through for all his faults, um, starts the process of transformation when he becomes king. But really, it's William that sees it through to its ultimate um, end goal. So Diana is around the around the Queen. OK, let's put Diana back into the pack. She might come out again or she might not. Let's just see. So for Charles, let's see who's around Charles. Um, I can't say this the name. So I'm not going to attempt to or you'll all tell me it's wrong. Um, Dharma unfolding. Remember that you're on a path. Take one step at a time to happiness. Uh, let me just have a look at um, who this Ascended Master is, because it's not one that I have linked into particularly. Um, Charles is quite interested in Eastern uh, mysticism, so it doesn't surprise me. Um, so Dwal Kul is how it says to pronounce it. Dwal Kul. He's known as the Tibetan. Remember, this is for Prince Charles. He is a Tibetan Buddhist master. He is said to have had many incarnations, including as a devotee of Buddha himself and as one of the three wise men who honoured the baby Jesus. Well, I didn't know that. Uh, through his earthly experience, he has learned the importance of spiritual practice and discipline and knows that the path we are on unfolds over time. He is now helping light workers follow their dharma, which is a Sanskrit word meaning right way of living. Yeah, I mean, Charles's whole lifetime has been about patience and discipline. So um, waiting patiently for his moment. So that is probably pretty appropriate. OK, so that was Charles. We had the Queen. Let's have a little look at Camilla. OK, I can't resist. Let's just have a look at Camilla's guide at this time. So... Uh, let me just clear the energy. Hold on. Because we've just had two quite powerful energies, the Queen and Prince Charles. So let's give Camilla her space just to be herself. And there's something in the words I've just said. It's like she wants the space to be herself. She doesn't really. She's she's loved Charles. But, you know, really, she just wants her own space. She just wants to get on with her own life. But yet she's got this big job coming up, which is basically Queen Consort. And how she's going to rise to that challenge is uh, something she's asking herself as well. Um, OK, let's have a look. Camilla. Let's just feel into Camilla's energy. You know, in the UK, we have something called pantomime. Um, which is a Christmas play, effectively. And it's made for children and families, and it's always over the top and exaggerated. And there's always like a baddie that comes onto the stage in pantomime. And um, the audience sort of go, boo! And then it's like, it's behind you, they're behind you. It's all, you know, tongue in cheek. But it's sort of like, that's the role that she signed up to in this lifetime, because... She's got a hard act to follow in Diana and many people have not forgiven her for the uh, uh, affair that she had with Charles. Both, you know, well, it never stopped, basically. It, it started pretty much. It's been constant throughout. It was constant throughout his marriage to Diana. So people have never really a lot of people haven't been able to forgive. She's like this baddie. She's like the villain. Um, that's not my words. I'm just feeling the energy of what she feels like as well. But again, soul contract. She signed up to that. So we've got faith. Um, she has the energy of faith, humanity and benevolence. Stay calm. Trust the good in yourself and others. See the light in the world. So she has the, um, the guide, which is linked into faith. Let's just have a little look at what that one is about. A, B, C, G, E, F, G. 
Faith is the archangel who's focused on bringing out our benevolence. She's the twin flame of Archangel My Michael and is on a divine mission to help us recognise that humans are basically good and aligned with love. Um, yeah, so in many ways, um, one of Camilla's roles in terms of soul contracts is for us to be able to find it in our heart to forgive her, to like her, to warm to her, to turn a page, to give her her space, to welcome her in. Okay, right, let's pull a few cards for her then. I'm going to stick with this deck. It seems to be working quite well at the moment. And then we might shake it up for the younger royals. So Camilla, what is there to say about Camilla's energy at this time? How is Camilla doing at this time? Camilla, how is Camilla doing at this time? I feel like she's quite alone. I feel this energy of aloneness with her. Now that might be her own choosing. Sometimes we choose to be alone. But I'm feeling an energy of aloneness. Oh gosh. The four of, um, yeah, yeah, gosh. Ooh, yeah, look at this. Okay, so this is what she knows is coming into her future. Okay, this is the unavoidable um, result of the path that she's chosen, which is riding on the chariot, riding in the royal carriage on Charles's coronation day as queen consort. Okay, um, it's fated, it's destined, there is celebration, but look at the cards that were on the bottom of the deck which is completely like, I'm totally in fear of this. I'm up at night worrying about this. And I don't know if I even want this, but she's in too deep. Okay. And it's really interesting. There's a very famous thing that was said to Diana before she married Prince Charles, where I think it was like the night before or a couple of nights before, Diana got cold feet and she said to her sister, I don't know whether I can go through with this marriage. And the sister said back to her in a jokey way, it's too late, Dutch, which was the, the nickname. It's too late, Dutch. Your face is on all of the tea towels. OK, your face is on all of the tea towels, all of the merch. It's a bit, it's, karma's got a funny way of coming back and biting you on the backside because this is now what's happening with Camilla. Not linking into marrying Charles, but linking into what has to now happen, which is that he ascends the throne and she is worried about it. It's keeping her up at night. She, she doesn't know whether she even wants it, okay? It's like, and it's also, I am also hearing, it is linked into the marriage as well. It's that energy of, it's this thing about being a mistress um, and then you become the wife and it's like it was all quite glamorous and sexy and whatever when I was the mistress. Now I'm the wife. It's sort of like, ooh, OK, it was it the cup that actually I really wanted. That's sort of what I'm feeling here with her. Um, so she feels quite tormented, actually. And uh, let's just pull a few more. Let's see if we can get anything else. Camilla. She also doesn't know who she can trust, but she can trust the queen. That's interesting. She can trust the queen. We've got the empress energy. So, yeah, look, the empress goes with the six of cups. She'd quite like things to stay as they are, to, for it to stay in the past. She's harking back to another age. She's harking back to you know, maybe younger years with Charles. She's harking back to younger years, maybe when the Queen was younger. Um, it's almost like she wants to stop time. And for this next phase that is destined to be delayed or prevented altogether. She knows it can't, but the only person she really feels safe with is the Queen. So I feel, and it's funny because, I mean, I don't know, but was all the speculation about whether the Queen ever approved of Camilla or not, I don't know. Let's just pull a card on that in terms of their relationship. Let's pull one for how the Queen feels about Camilla. Okay, how does the Queen feel about Camilla? Again, this is very dry, it's very unemotional, but I'm hearing an unavoidable reality. 
Um, and that probably is, yeah, an unavoidable reality that, that Camilla will become Queen Consort. <laughs> that Camilla will take my place. Anything else to say? How's the Queen feel about Camilla? We have the cup with the world. I think there's just a very pragmatic energy coming through, which is just like when it's my time to go, when it's when the cycle is completed, this woman doesn't really step into my shoes, but she she sits she sits on the throne, you know. She's not the one that's actually the the queen. It's all a bit confusing if maybe you're not in the UK and don't understand our rather our archaic traditions, but she's not the one with power. She's not the queen. She's the queen consort. But I'm seeing an image of them both sitting on two thrones effectively. OK, so Charles is the one with power, but um, she's also sitting beside him, very much like Prince Philip sat beside the queen. Top of the deck again, we've got the death card for some reason. So... Um, yeah, that's sort of stalking the corridors. Death is stalking the corridors. OK, right. Let's move on. Then I'm going to take a coffee break and let's do uh, who should we do next? Let's do Kate. I'm quite interested to see who Kate has around her as a guide. OK. Kate. feel Diana's energy very close as soon as I say Kate and my mind does go to um, her thinness she's a beautiful woman but she's very thin and of course Diana had issues with eating so I'm hoping that hasn't passed down she, Kate might just be one of these people that's naturally thin but she is very thin I feel Diana there um, right Kate what guide has she got around her please Lord Ganesh, infinite abundance. Um, I mean, she has got an abundant life in this lifetime. She, was, she wasn't a member of aristocracy, Kate Middleton. Um, she's a member of the middle class, as we call it in the UK. Um, and she's, you know, following a path of great abundance. Um, and obstacles are being removed. Spiritual support and connections are increasing. I don't think she's got any awareness that she's got Ganesh around her. There was a beautiful, beautiful photograph that I remember when William and Kate visited India, probably the Taj Mahal, can't remember, but there's a picture of her. And let me just see if I can, I'm going to actually show it to you because it was so stunning. Um, let me pause the camera. Hold on, I'm going to find this picture. Okay, you're back. Actually, it was on a visit to um, Pakistan. I mean... I think, can you see that? I think she looks like an absolute goddess there. I think that's, that, there, is, there are other images, I can't find them all now, where she's seated in the temple. Oh, this is the one. I mean, look at this. Let me just get this. Is that not, oh, that's just so be. I just think that's such a beautiful photograph. It's, yes, the clothes are beautiful, the colour's beautiful, but it's more the energy of serenity and peace. And she would have had all the cameras in front of her. There would be official delegations there. Um, William is beside her, actually, in the photograph. But there's this... I don't think she realises it, but there's an affinity with the Eastern traditions. And we have Lord Ganesh. Lord Ganesh around her. And yeah, basically he's there just to remove all obstacles. And I'm, it's quite funny. I'm hearing that he removed all obstacles also in terms of ensuring her, ensuring that she was the one that William chose. Because there was this time when they'd be, this was pre-marriage, they'd been going out for a while and then William called it off. And uh, I don't know how long they were apart, but he called it off and, you know, it doesn't take a genius to think that probably he had other female uh, relate dalliances in that time. Um, and, you know, 
human nature being human nature, I'm sure there would have been other women that were vying for his attention. Um, Ganesh was having none of it. You know, it's like, no, they're going to be swept out of the way because she's the one that's meant, she's the one that's meant to be with him in this lifetime. Um, these two, these two are what it's all about going forward. They are the power couple. They are the power couple. Okay, let's pull some cards for her. I feel like I want a different deck for her. Um, and I think I might actually use the same deck that I had for the Queen. Okay, because Kate was a Queen in a previous lifetime. I've channeled this before. I believe she was Catherine of Aragon. She, so she was Henry VIII's first wife. And indeed was the wife that even though he then went on to marry seven others, she outlived him. OK, so there's something. Uh, what star sign is Kate Middleton? Because I'm feeling Tor a Tor Taurus type energy with her, but I don't think she is. Um, let's have a look. There seems to be a similarity with the Queen. That's all I mean in terms of this. I'm going to just keep keep on going. She's a reliable Capricorn. OK, that makes sense. She's a reliable Capricorn sun with a sensitive Cancer moon. So that's her link with William as well, because he's Cancerian. Now that's a nice little um, mix with those two. Right, let's see. So Kate Middleton, let's just clear the deck. Kate Middleton, Kate Middleton, Kate Middleton. I'm putting a lot of white light around her. Um, she's very protected. Diana loves her. Princess Diana absolutely loves her. I've just got Diana's face and she's just beaming. Beaming. Beaming with pride. Beaming with pride for who Kate is. Beaming with pride for the grandchildren that she's produced. She loves her. Okay, Kate Middleton. Safe pair of hands is what I'm hearing. Never put a step wrong. Very, it's a similar energy to the Queen. Never put a foot wrong. Um, wow, yeah, look at that, the lightning bolt. She has got some serious energy. Um, like Diana, it's quite similar. You know, Diana, do you remember when she was alive, she always did this thing where she was like looking out underneath her fringe and it was all quite coy and like, you know, but actually the power that Diana wielded was immense. And Kate is like this quiet workhorse that's in the, in the background a lot of the time. Um, and you know, she, she, she holds considerable power herself. Um, an interesting card that's come out with her, Views of the Ego. And I'm going to look this up, but I also want to just interpret it. Let me just have a look. Right. On this car, ca card, can you see there is a woman here who looks very like Kate? There's a woman, there's two men, and there's a man here in the glass, whatever, uh, Oh, no, it's a mirror. So it's a man looking at himself in the mirror. OK. Oh, OK, I get it. And there's Kate standing beside. OK, this is like what she what what her ability is, is I think that's William in the mirror. OK, so William, he's been he's born to be king. OK, um, he has to have some ego about him to be born knowing that you're going to be the king one day. OK, it's not a small task. It's not a small energy that is overshadowing you. Kate keeps him in check. Kate keeps him grounded. Kate tells him when he's getting too big for his own boots and she won't let his ego um, get out of control. She also insists that he looks in the mirror, OK, um, that he doesn't project out in terms of what he doesn't like um, in others. It's like, no, you have to look in the mirror and sort yourself out. So she's here forcing him to look in the mirror. That's what I feel. Um, and I suspect she's been a peacekeeper between the two brothers as well, or tried to be, even if it's just she's listened incessantly to William's, you know, uh, moans about Harry, which I'm sure there have been, uh, because it's been a brotherly fallout. So that's what I feel about that card. I will just have a look, though, at the official meaning of the card, um, just to respect the writer of the deck as well, see if we've missed anything. Um, so it says three people stand together before a full length before a full length mirror. The man in the centre gazes keenly at himself, um, and it seems his reflection is looking back with a superior air. The card shows that there may be a thoughtless, selfish person in your life, whether in a love, friendship, family, or business relationship. This person can be self-absorbed 
and makes plans only in terms of how they affect him or her. Yeah, so there's something here about um, she loves him, but I feel as though William can have a selfish streak and um, she she calls him to account for that is what I'm feeling. She calls him to account for that because the man who's looking in the mirror has got this sort of flunky beside him. <laughs> you know, is that's, that's like a servant energy. Uh, and the servant would be the one who would say, of course you look wonderful, sir. You know, of course you can do this. Of course you can do that. This other person is a yes man who will just keep saying yes, yes, yes to William. Uh, Kate's the one who actually says no, no. So she's like she she's the reality check. She's grounded, um, and that and together they will be formidable because she will bring out the best in him. Um, I'm sort of feeling like, but what's in it for her? So let's just have an energy of what's in what's in it for her. Let's see it from her perspective. So from Kate's perspective, show me Kate's energy in all of this. We understand what she's doing. Show me her energy in this. You see, it's all about William. It's quite a selfless lifetime. Um, we've got the Akashic Library as well. Um, it, I'm feeling that it's quite a selfless lifetime for her. Of course, she gets rewards and bonuses and all the rest of it. But it's all about the King of Scrolls in this lifetime. Because again, like Queen Elizabeth, look, look what William's got in his hand. He's got the scroll. He's got the contract. Soul contract. There's no getting out of it. So she's come in to help him in this lifetime. Um, and it's written in the Akashic field of both of them that this is predestined. OK, it's predestined. Um, and everything they do and everything they say is recorded, as it is for all of us. But it feels as though she's very aware of this. She's very aware of how to conduct herself, how to behave. She'll never put a foot wrong. She'll never put a foot wrong. To be honest, she hasn't put a foot wrong up to now. And she won't going forward. She'll be steady Eddie is what I'm hearing. Steady Eddie. But never underestimate steady Eddie. Never ever think that they're just vanilla and bland and, you know, no. They're actually the power behind the throne is what I'm hearing. They're the power behind the throne. And the thing with her past life energy as Catherine of Aragon, it's really interesting, is that if Henry VIII in that lifetime had appreciated Catherine of Aragon, he would have been an um, even more successful king than he was because all of his energy got depleted by all of the women um, and all of the marriages and his, his, his mind, you know, got taken off the job at hand, which was basically just being a good king. With In this lifetime with William, it's more the case that, no, together they will be formidable because she's going to keep his eye on the job, i.e. being a good king. And um, it's, it's just the way it's meant to be. It's the way it's meant to be. OK, let's pull a couple of cards for how she's feeling at the moment because that's all soul contract stuff. Um, I still feel like I want another deck for her. Um, yeah, let's use this one. I haven't used this deck for a long time. This is the Enchanted Tarot. It's impossible to shuffle. <laughs> but um, for some reason, I wanted to bring this one in today. So, OK, Kate Middleton. Just show me the energy of how she is at the moment, please. Three cards I'm hearing from this deck. Kate Middleton. Is she really? The tower. She's waiting for the tower. It's interesting. I think she's much more aware of how fast things could change for her and William in terms of getting the top job than William is or Charles is. She's 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 waiting for the tower to fall. Um, let's just see what else is going on though. The tower. What? Why have we got the tower for Kate? Princess of Wands. The Nine of Wands. I actually think she's a little bit concerned about one of her children. That's what I'm feeling here. I don't think it's terrible, or anything, you know, but yeah, Four of Swords. She's needing some time and space to process something and it feels as though it's family related and it doesn't feel like it's royal family. Well, it is the royal family. I feel it's her family. I feel it's the Princess of Wands might be her child. It could be Charlotte. Um, it, as I say, 
What is this? What is the Princess of Wands? Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yes, I understand. The Tower for her energy, and this is just something she's processing internally, and it's becoming very, very real now, is how do I hold it together in terms of maintaining a private family life when the next stage occurs, which is basically either Charles becoming king, which means William is getting much closer to the throne, or William is, is king, because she's very private. She, she likes her children to be shielded. Um, she likes them to have the space to just be. Look at this, the Nine of Wands. It's like I'm defending my position. I'm defending my family. How do I maintain being a stay-at-home mum, for want of a better word, with this big role that I have to fulfil? Two of Wands, the big role that I have to fulfil for my man to eventually become the King of Pentacles. How do I do this? It's like a tower moment. It's like a, a moment of inner crisis where she is... I mean, there's no cards of... We haven't got the Nine of Swords here for her, but there is just a process she's going through where she's trying to get her head around it. Um, let me just pull one other card from another deck. Still want further clarification on this tower, please. What else is... Kate Middleton, the tower. There's also something about... As... Um, Catherine of Aragon, most of Henry VIII's wives ended up in the Tower of London. Okay, they had, uh, Anne Boleyn had her head chopped off. I uh, can't remember what happened to all of them, but you know, a few of them were beheaded anyway. <laughs> That's not gonna happen to her in this lifetime, Kate. It didn't happen to her when she was Catherine of Aragon either. She outlived him, but she witnessed the um, brutality of um, sovereignty. And there's just a memory with her coming up at the moment is what I'm feeling. There's a memory coming up at the moment. And she just needs to let that go. If I was advising her as a therapist or a healer, I would be asking her to imagine just a very bright, easy uh, transition um, to the top job. Let's call it that. Um, that she will be able to, it's like she can't, She feels like she's not going to be able to do it all, but she will, she will be able to do it all. Yeah, she's on the threshold, she's on the threshold. And that's the energy of, I'm about to jump off the cliff uh, energetically, and I don't know whether I'm going to be able to fly. She will be able to fly, because her her guides are going to flow in when she needs them the most. I don't know how um, secure her faith is. Uh, I'm not picking up, I mean, who knows, it's personal to her. But yeah, look at that, the threshold. There's much more to her than we've seen so far that is going to be unveiled. And it's gonna be a surprise to her as well when she really steps into who she's really gonna be in this lifetime. What we've seen already is just uh, foreshadowing the greatness that she will bring and she will be yeah so she just needs to calm her nerves um, how's her health at this time I'm just going to ask about her health how is her health at this time she, she has an energy about her so I'm going to do that again because they didn't I wasn't concentrating um I, th I think it's a mum type energy of like, I'm all right, I'm fine, because other people are more important. She's very used to putting other people before herself. She puts William before herself, you know, she puts her children before herself. She will put the nation before herself. Who's looking after, for, who's looking after her? Hopefully William is, we'll get to him in a minute, but let's just have a look at her health. Her health, Kate okay, Middleton. There's nothing, there's nothing coming out that is revealing anything to me. Um, the Eight of Wands and the Sun, which is positive. Uh, but I am feeling as though she lives off um, adrenaline a bit. And I would like to see her eat a bit more. 
because I just feel like she needs a good meal in her, which would help as well. It would help ground her. You know, sometimes when you put extra weight on, um, it can be for many things. It can be for protection. It can be a bit of a barrier between you and another. And, you know, she's got a lot of people that are going to be wanting and taking from her. And I think a lot of a, a bit of extra weight, unless she's got a problem putting it on, which it might be the case, would just help to ground her and um, make her feel a little bit more secure in herself. But anyway, none of my business, really. But that would just be my guidance if uh, <laughs> she was in front of me right now. Let's pull one final card for her from this deck. One final card for Kate. The muse, the muse. She's a role model for many people. Her grace, her elegance, her style, her beauty. She'll age naturally. She won't be doing anything to alter her appearance. Um, the epitome of grace is what I'm hearing. So she's, she's a muse for others to look at. She's, she's about beauty in this lifetime. Okay, I'm going to take a break, guys. Maybe you want to as well. And then we'll come back and we'll do William and we'll do Harry and Meghan. Okay, bye for now.